Oh, man. Week one was insane. Some things we absolutely loved, some things we hated. And we're going to walk you through today to make sure you understand what is prescriptive, what is something to be scared about, and what is something you should just throw away. We've got a lot of data for you, a lot of fun jokes on today's show. You will enjoy it. Like the video, subscribe, tell your friends, and enjoy the ride. Hungering for something new this summer? HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Let me throw some words out there, Mike and Jason. Let me throw these oh, words. Oh, hit me with some words. Bitcoin. Okay. Cryptocurrency. Okay. I NFTs. Like All right. Oh, man. Uh, investing. I'm confused and I'm scared. Investing is an ever-changing landscape, gentlemen, and uh, the Modern Finance Podcast, hosted by Kevin Rose, is a great place to listen about the latest trends in crypto and brush up on fundamentals. Look, it's not for everybody, crypto that is, until you listen to Modern Finance because they are a crypto show for the novice and expert alike, and their mission is to demystify crypto without dumbing it down. True Ventures partner Kevin Rose interviews top tech experts and entrepreneurs exploring modern finance tools and helping others understand crypto NFTs and even traditional finance hacks. The financial landscape is harder than ever to navigate, but you don't have to do it alone. Download and subscribe to Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't be the last person on the next train out, Mike. Listen to Modern I Finance. I won't be anymore and get ahead of the future of finance. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 13th, welcome into the glass cage of emotion <laughs> that is week one, fantasy football reactions, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, I'm Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers, we're holding your hand, we're here to give you a moment of uh, silence if it went poorly. I'm still tilted. I know, <laughs> no, I, I know. I Arms are wide open, guys, and, and ooh, like Scott Step, and the embrace, and the this is this is one of those three second hugs. Okay, but no matter what, no matter what, it went well. Bring it in. Yeah, you had a hard time. Bring it in. Bring it in. And this is a three second hug. This ooh. is one of those where we're gonna hold. That's for real. One Mississippi, <laughs> two <laughs> Mississippi. We we're gonna breathe. <laughs> three Mississippi, and let's get back to work. I was, uh, I was watching the game last night, and. Uh, it, the, which was it was an enjoyable game. It was interesting, and uh, but I'm you know I'm a little bit off. And my wife's like, "What what is wrong? Are you?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, my fantasy team." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we're back. Freaking Tyreek Hill, man! Look, look I've come got, on. I've got some reassuring news for everybody out there. At this point last year, we were six point two five percent of the way through the season. And this year we're only five point eight eight percent. Ooh, I like those very numbers nice. because uh, uh, we got an extra game. Honestly, it, it is so hard to manage expectations of a weekly game. Yes, over the course of a season in week one, and that's that's what we're going to do today. There are things we learned that are, I think, prescriptive. Things that we are afraid of that I don't think we need to be. And you know, we're we're going to get into all of that. But the emotions. And the reactions of week one are insane. If if what happened this week identically happened in week seven, it, it's totally different. It's totally it just we because this confirms all the talk. This confirms or or denies mm -hmm. all of the uh, thoughts and expectations. The problem with that is it's just one week. Yeah, this it is doesn't not actually. The season. No, I have I have some numbers. There's a, there's a really re if you want the numbers for week one, if you want the um, the come down off of that reaction, all of the emotions, go read the article on our website by Matt Desorbo, 
he talks he he plots out the week one performances over the last few years, the breakout performances and the inverse. We're going to get into some of those names today. We're going to go through studs and duds. We're going to go through the pooped in their big boy pants. Um, we got Monday Punday momentarily, of course. I mean, that would be <laughs> that's always an appropriate reaction to the weekend. But when you look at the real numbers, you'll understand what Jason is saying. Because if 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 somebody has a down game or gets injured in week six, it's just week six. But week one, the authority on on whether something is official which is Twitter, uh, has confirmed that week one is the most important week. And you need you need us to walk you through this. We need you to walk us through this. <laughs> and uh, I'm hurting. we'll I'm hurting survive. Here. By the way, uh, one of the numbers I'll throw out at the very top because we'll get into some of the studs and duds. But with the breakout week one performances, just 13% of those historically end up being a top 12 running back wide receiver or tight end. Just 39% end up being a top 24 wide receiver running back or tight end for the rest of the year. So the odds are not in your favor that it's prescriptive. And these are for players that are drafted at low ADP. So the right. break, you know, the Christian Kirk's like week one are those type of players. Right. Very rarely is that prescriptive and we're going to help you through it. But Let's get sophisticated. Oh, yes. Let's get sophisticated. <laughs> yes. Let's go to San Francisco, shall we? How about Brandon I Yuck? Or Brandon I Puke? More appropriate. Or maybe we go to Debo Manual. Oh, now you're a man. Or Debo oh. Super Samuel. You said it incorrectly. Fix you, me. You fix are my uncultured. Problem. We are very sophisticated. Debo Super Samuel. Uh, Raheem Most Hurt. Oh, mm. Went from must, heart, mm. must start to most hurt. Mm. Uh, let's go to Green Bay, shall we? The Green Bay Slackers. Or the Aaron Frodgers. <laughs> Discount double choke. That's that's one of my favorite I've ever seen. The, the discount, discount double, double, choke. double choke. Oh, oh, how about Detroit Hawk City? I like that. Or Super Cup. Mike Goose Icky. Ooh. Kyler McFlurry. <laughs> Gronkowski. Oh, gronk, gronk, gronk. Ryan Hips Tragic. Oh no, not I, the hip. I don't like that one. That and then we sad. do have some repeat classics that we'll get into, like. Julio Jones. Classic Ezekiel Smelliot. And uh, Clyde Meh towards Hilaire. Or Devontae Saddams. <laughs> and, of course, Jameis Winston. What a performance. By us? In that oh, well, yes, yes, well, yes, yes exactly. Uh, I was Except gonna... for Jason. Jason, it was a super awesome Dragon Ball Z reference. You gotta hop in. You think I watched that show? Yeah. No. Well, look, I Dragon look, I Ball don't, Z not for nerds. I, <laughs> I, I don't blame Jason because the the pun made more sense the way he said it with his last name. You know what I mean? Sure. But did you guys see Debo Samuel this weekend? Uh, did I, you see him? Tell your man. Yeah. A man. Yeah, we saw him. Very prescriptive. Very prescript. He's the only prescriptive one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lions saw his backside a lot. Oh goodness. Yes, they did. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. Listen, I want to invite you right now. Go to jointhefoot.com. You will get an extra episode of the show. You will be a part of the largest, most spectacular fantasy football community on planet Earth. The Foot Clan is mighty and strong mm -hmm. and incredibly awesome. And you can uh, join that community at jointhefoot.com and get a bunch of premium tools for in season, our consistency charts, our stream finder, and a whole lot more. That is our community for the end season. The ultimate draft kit was February through September. Now you had to join the foot.com and get on board for the next 17 weeks. No. Uh, the fantasy footballers.com for all the articles and let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by sleeper. Um, uh, Man, stuff to talk about. Let's let's start in San Francisco here because he had a couple bits of news. One was the surprise inactive of Trey Sermon on game day, which was um, very. Gonna, it was surprising. It was it was it was crazy. And I know we have a lot to talk about with San Francisco in general. And maybe maybe Mike, you deserve, or Kyle Shanahan deserves the magic card tricks because because <laughs> it's getting to the point now where 
either the beat writers in San Francisco are uh, checking Twitter the same way we are and not glued into what's happening at camp, or you have a magician in Kyle Shanahan taking lessons from Matt Nagy. I think you might have both. So you had two things happen here. One was Trey Sermon's surprise inactive, which, look, if, if people want to, and they were on Twitter, all over me over Raheem Mostert getting hurt predictably, right? Two for 20, then he's injured. Ooh, 10 here, yards per carry. He, here's the thing. Kyle Shanahan didn't see that coming because he would have had Trey Sermon active yes. on game day. Instead, you have a couple of running backs, Elijah Mitchell and Jermichael Hasty, who are big-time special teams contributors, not something that Trey Sermon does. And so Raheem Mostert goes down, knee injury, apparently, according to the beat writers that I checked in on. So wink, wink. Um, <laughs> he'd been dealing with a knee injury on and off during camp, and this was a re-aggravation. They're not concerned about ACL, but – you should be concerned because Raheem Mostert is a walking injury factory lately. Uh, I mean, we're moments removed from him saying, check out my muscles, and then he goes down in two plays. But Trey Sermon's inactivity, what that means for fantasy. And then the other one is, is Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk played behind Trent Sherfield, didn't play much. Right. And everything we knew about camp, which was Trey Sermon – locked in the second running back role and Brandon Ayuk is poised to return to glory after last year what do we do yeah I mean I uh, the the beat reporters that I follow I need to unfollow <laughs> um and and but I agree with you I wonder if it's them being bad at their jobs which you were um or if just Kyle Shanahan makes it really hard to do your job but um the we're going to talk about Elijah Mitchell tomorrow uh, on the waivers Certainly. when it when it comes to what do you do, how much do you go in, how much is this prescriptive, Trey Sermon now, all, all of the questions regarding that. With regards to Ayuk, at least that was combined. Kyle Shanahan came out and said it was combined with the fact that he missed 10 days with a hamstring injury. Um, so, But he was, he was active in the game. They didn't just... Um, you know, take him out and rest him completely. So it was very, very disappointing. And, um, I, you know, I, I think where do you go from here with Brandon Ayuk? Do you have to, I mean, at this point you have to bench him until he is more involved and past the hamstring. Yes. And that, and that can be even piggybacked on the, the data that we got this week and about people coming back off of hamstring injuries in general, whether that was Austin Eckler returning who did fall into the end zone, but the workload was diminished where you saw more of Roundtree and Justin Jackson. The, the hamstring injury, if you had just played Debo last year when he dealt with one, you would have regretted it because there was re-injury and some issues. You need to let him prove it at this point. And I think the lesson from Shanahan has been, I'm not going to give a young player carte blanche. I mean, I think that's what it is. Ten days off, well, there's ten days that those other guys were doing work, and Trent Sherfield showed out in preseason, and I will give him that. Yes. Um, he wasn't going to give him the job and he wasn't going to give it to Trey Sermon if those other guys were out working him. So, you know, I don't know what the age is when they say, okay, I trust you to be a grown man. I don't know what that age is in football, but it was bewildering. It was a disappointment for anybody that played Brandon Ayuk with optimism. And I agree with you. I think it's benched till further notice. Mike, do you have any thoughts? I do not disagree. It's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to, you know, just completely throw the dumpster all over the beat reporters but I mean now you have reports are like well he started off hot in training camp but it, it tailed off at the end where was that report it's, why it's wasn't that all over Twitter so much easier to give those reports after something's yeah. happened right um still learning to be a pro <laughs> uh okay well it's crazy because he was a pro for the 17.8 fantasy points per game he averaged over the last eight games last year <laughs> so bizarre but you know when you walk into a locker room and this guy's healthy no! Man. A professional looks a little different. Yeah. Um, I am going to embrace Debo while he's healthy. You should. Uh, that was a heck of a game. Um, Zach Moss was a surprise inactive. Another one in Buffalo where, what? I mean, he's healthy. He, All reports are that he's completely healthy and he was not active on game. And day. I was reading some more reports of they, the team felt that Matt Burita was just the better player. Well, and, and, which I, he I might will, be, but none of them matter. I will say this: at least with this one, you saw the change in preseason where Devin Singletary became the kind of 
one A and B. Like it was, it was not a split workload. They when when Moss and Singletary were both um, active, ready to go in preseason, the starters were out there. It, Zach Moss wasn't, and so at least there was an inkling of this. I know in my drafts, I completely was on the Devin Singletary side because of what we saw in preseason. I don't know that the beat reporters talked about it, but I mean, Zach well, Moss we said is, to stay away from the backfield. So yes. hopefully that advice was heeded, or you got, you know, uh, the cost was so low that yeah. it, it made no difference, and you certainly weren't playing them this week, right, against Pittsburgh. Correct. No, you you should not have played either of them against Pittsburgh. But going forward. I do think that Devin Singletary could be interesting if it's a one running back system there. Yeah, and he can catch the football, so makes it easier to put up some at least pedestrian numbers. This was unfortunate. Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy oh, man. carted off the field. He uh, looks so good, too. He did. He was by far the leading receiver. I think six targets, six catches. Um, this is a long-term injury, a high ankle sprain. We thought maybe the ankle was broken. X-rays were negative. This is a six- to eight-week injury minimum for Jerry Judy. And you're looking at players that are, you know, he depends on his explosiveness and his yards after the catch, and you take away his wheel, one of them. He's got a bum wheel. It's going to be, I mean, throw him on the IR if you yep. got a spot. Otherwise, I would, I'd probably drop him and move on versus hold him to the end of the year to maybe get upside when you have so many other pass catchers. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if you don't have an IR spot on your fantasy roster, you have to drop him. He's I, I expect him to even be placed on the, the, the actual Denver IR. Broncos yeah, IR. Yeah. yeah. Um so if you don't have this spot, yeah, I would I would have to move on and we'll talk about the options behind him, but Tim Patrick um and Tim Patrick's very interesting. Noah Fant yeah. as yeah, and, well. And Sutton will get you imagine he was kind of getting worked in a little bit, getting more comfortable. Not a lot of targets yesterday. Man, that stinks. He looks yeah. so. <laughs> he did. That was the most just, just emotional reaction. Yes, right that there. one just is just like so upsetting because it's that second year breakout wide receiver. Everything lining up for him looks amazing. It's like yeah, yeah, Jerry Judy, let's go. And then it, honestly, when it happened, we were worried about like a dislocated, yeah. horrific injury. So. Uh, at least it's your, not full season. Your reaction was the way I was with Raheem Mostert because the news about Trey Sermon comes out. The player prop on, on Mostert goes from like 50, 58. 58 rushing yards to 100. It's Detroit who, you know, Elijah Mitchell goes out and destroys, and I've got Mostert everywhere. And then you don't – not getting to see what you hoped uh, yep. you had a chance to see is just so disappointing, but it's football, and we don't control any of it. So – Fitzpatrick, that would be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitz tragic, uh, hip subluxation, which sounds well like said. Not hip. No. Um, MRI today. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, who by the way dropped our first injury blitz podcast, which is another one of the perks over at jointhefoot.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically said the mechanism of injury was similar to what Tua had in Alabama, but less severe. He expects Fitz to be on IR. He's going to miss this week's game against the Giants, no question. And you're looking at a reconfiguration of your expectations in Washington unless you have a confidence I don't have in Tyler Haneke and other options. No, uh, this is a clear downgrade for Terry McLaurin. I, I still think Terry will be, He'll be fine, okay, but, but the true breakout potential is – the upside is is hurt a little bit by having a backup quarterback. Um, and then, you know, when it comes to Antonio Gibson, I think he's probably going to be fine. The team seems like they are going to rely on him. And oh, he, was it, a, he was a full workhorse. Oh, yeah. When it comes to the eye test uh -huh. of week one and just, you know, sometimes those things are more important in week one because you just see, w you know, what what is true regardless of the stats. And you go, ooh, he looked he looked strong and fast and good. Yeah, there were there were only a handful of running backs that looked the part in week one, in my opinion, right? You had some of the stalwarts had horrible games, and we'll talk about them. Mm -hmm. But Gibson was one that he looked great. Absolutely looked the part. Zach Ertz, hamstring strain. Okay. So Dallas Goddard. Yeah. Uh you know, could, could get more work. And the the team looked pretty good, mind you, it was Atlanta. But, you know, Goddard was a uh sneeze away from a touchdown in this one Tyrell Williams helmet to helmet hit left in the third quarter um you also had Rashad Penny leave with a calf injury 
Oh, and then, Goddard, Goddard had a touchdown. Did he have a touchdown? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, he was a, a he was sneeze great. away from a second. He was four for 42 with a touchdown. Because I remember seeing him yep. kind of fight to try to get yep. one and got out of bounds. Uh, Josh Jacobs, this is news for Monday Night Football. Yes. Downgraded to questionable with an illness, but had been cleared for the toe injury. So, got sick. I bet he plays. Yeah, he probably plays. And I, if you didn't see this news, you, you probably need him to play because picking up somebody else in this game is going to be difficult. Kenyon Drake was drafted in almost all formats. Tyson Williams, we've been through the waiver wire with him. Eh, you might be able to get Latavius Murray. There's a chance. And then, uh, you know, depth-wise in Las Vegas, who gets work outside of Kenyon Drake? Peyton Barber? Probably. Woof. <laughs> uh, so let's just hope he plays. And it's good that it's not the toe. So it's yeah, it's at least it's questionable. But yeah, if you're depending on Josh Jacobs, you better be on that news. Uh, all right. So that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, which was very clutch throughout Sunday. If you noticed, they were quick with the yes. breaking news alerts. So just download the app, install it. It's free, and then subscribe to the breaking alerts uh, section, and you'll get the news before everybody else. And before we get to the stud muffins, want to thank DraftKings. Look, it was good to see the teams back out there on the gridiron. Indeed. Oh. And lucky for us, that was just week one. DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is putting you in the center of the action for week two. New customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. So get in on the action now. It's simple. You just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, see how your team stacks up against competition. On Fridays, we're making our own lineups. Yeah. You can see how it's done. Mm, we'll see how those mm -hmm. teams oh, stacked up. Mine dominated. Uh, look, download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS this week. New customers get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with the code BALLERS for the free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That is code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit is required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. And we would like to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's show. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. In a VPN, it's incredibly important because it is a tool that protects you as you browse the internet May on your computers tablets phones even things like your fire stick when you're streaming media you need a vpn to encrypt your data because when you're reading and you're searching if it's not people can see what you are doing and for listeners of the show ip vanish is offering an incredible 65 percent off their annual plan equal to six months for free we are telling you, you need to protect your data. You're out there at the coffee shop on that free Wi-Fi. Anyone who wants to know your business, they can know your business. So protect yourself. Go to IPVanish.com slash footballers. Claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual IP Vanish is the best of the best, rated a 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, IPVanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. I love muffins. <laughs> you know what stuck out to me when you guys were doing the ad read was, you know, getting out on the gridiron, and I'm trying to mentally think about where that phrase would have come from, like gridiron. Okay. And the best I've got is like like a like a grill has got this grid on it. Mm. And like well, the, the field's got the lines yeah, that look like the, a grid. That part makes sense. But the iron, I don't know. I just don't I know where it's it came because from. football started in the prison system. <laughs> and so you're behind <laughs> like bars. A, like longest yard. That's right. And a it lot ain't of people, easy being that cheesy. That was a documentary. A lot of people don't know that, but that's where grid iron comes from because it's like the grid, <laughs> but they're all behind iron. So, mm. you know, you win some, you lose some. They lost. Okay. Well, look, let's get into the studs, and we're going to try to sift through these performances. Are they a flash in the pan? Look, a couple of the studs from last year, week one. Let's remind you. Let's set the context. Mitch Trubisky had a nice 30-point opening week. He was benched two weeks later. Naeem Hines was the running back five. You remember that madness mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. week one? Waiver wire extraordinaire, biggest pickup of 
week one, and then he gets one target, no carries in week two. Yeah, and Jonathan Taylor, managers were concerned. So mm -hmm. there's an implication for more players. Robbie Anderson was the wide receiver five last year. Um, he only finished inside the top 20 one more time we, the rest of the season. We may not forget about Sammy Watkins. May week one superstar always oh, be, in a, be in our hearts. He's cold-blooded. He's the Lizard King. Yeah, he is. Although I can't find the drop no matter what I do. That one is um, – that's still to come. Yeah, we get tonight. the Lizard King tonight. All right, quarterback studs. Week one, Kyler Murray, sweet mercy. He was electric. 21 for 32, 289 and four. Another on the ground. I mean, you didn't need – that performance to know you start Kyler in fantasy, but you got Minnesota at home in Jacksonville oh, the next two weeks. Oh, I mean, Joe go. Burrow carved up Minnesota, yeah. and Kyler has got weapons yes, all he does. over the field. Huge game for Christian Kirk, obviously, and uh, Rondell Moore is going to give him some free points through the year as well. Mahomes, yeah, he's a stud. It didn't he, matter that he had no touchdowns for a while. Yeah, I mean, it really – you watch the game, and he had the rushing touchdown, but he had done very little in the first half. Cleveland's controlling the game. No other passing <sighs> touchdowns. You're like, well, you know, oh, we'll have a disappointing game. Nope, he's bad Mahomes. He's good. Uh, Jameis Winston had a, one of the most peculiar games ever. I believe it's the lowest – Yardage for a five-touchdown game since 1948. That is correct. 148 yards passing on 14 completions. Five of the 14 completions were touchdowns. The man can see. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The man can see. Well, then why can't the, he throw for more than 150 yards? Because he didn't need to. He just can't because he's throwing touchdowns, Jason. What do you want him to do? This is one of the most obvious non-prescriptive performances of the week because he threw no interceptions. Um, he well, threw for 148 yards. He did throw an egregious, awful interception that got called back on a egregious, Ew, yes. awful penalty call. That's for, true. Yeah, I mean that was ridiculous. But um, I think Winston's going to be fine. I would agree. But uh, this team was absolutely dominant on the defensive side. They've got a great rushing game, and I think Winston is somebody that you are going to need. You can't lean on yardage for Winston this year because the team isn't Bruce Arians, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With, I mean, 20 pass attempts. What's the last time Jameis Winston started a game and had 20 pass attempts? Oh, I'm sure it's happened lots of times, but he didn't finish that game. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this is uh, – he's got a great matchup next week at Carolina. So, maybe he's in that conversation of, you know, Extreme, he, he obviously yeah. uh, can score touchdowns and Alvin Kamara can get tap passes for touchdowns for days. Uh, but, yes, he is not going to be a top – you know, what was he, like the quarterback three this week? Russell Wilson. He's good. 18 for 23, 254 and four. Uh, Indianapolis is not a slouch defense. They were on the road and he torched them and made a couple of ridiculous throws, dropped it in the bucket for Tyler Lockett. Um, he looked great. New offensive coordinator situation was, was great. So feeling good? So far. Oh, Jalen yeah. Hurts, 27 for 35. This one felt good. Seven for 62 on the ground. Jason started the week. 264 and three through the air. Uh, very, I, I think we all kind of came away saying, look, solid performance from Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to see a little bit of Devonta Smith flashing. You saw Goddard. You saw Jalen Rager make a play. You saw Kenneth Gainwell and Quez Watkins. Yeah, Kenneth and, Gainwell was very surprising that he was he was the two. Boston, Boston Scott, Scott was not nothing. involved at it, all. Yeah, it was all Kenneth Gainwell. Uh, as the the change of pace back from Miles Sanders, and I, I'm assuming Devontae Smith made the wide receiver list, but just in case he didn't, he's that dude. Like he was the guy out there for everything. Jalen Rager is kind of the the number two wide receiver who he came through with a touchdown, but Devontae Smith has immediately established himself as it. You you were projecting it, but you can't always just say like, oh, the the first one rookie is going to be the man. Yeah, I he's think, the man. I think behind him, it's it's actually murky. I think it's it's Rager, it's Watkins, it's it's the tight ends. But I wouldn't put one in any order than the other. Yeah, I agree. What what will be interesting is that obviously he did this against Atlanta, and sure. Atlanta just looked they look not so good. Bad. Um, so next week against San Francisco, we'll we'll see because they're obviously a better defense. How much better? Yeah. I don't know because Jared Goff. 
I don't know if you know this, but in standard scoring, you know, Tom Brady, Dak Prescott, they had these great monstrous weeks. They were outscored by Jared well, Goff. I mean, you guys saw. I mean, it was a devastating injury to Jason Barrett. ACL tear. Yes. Backbone of the of the secondary. And all of a sudden, now you're talking about Richard Sherman going back there. Now you're talking about, you know, them finding another solution. And they didn't, you know, once they lost Verrett, they just, they kind of fell apart. Yes. And um, I think Jalen Hurts is going to have no problem putting up fantasy points. Tom Brady attempted two and a half times more passes than Jameis Winston and put up a monster week. Dak, we saw it. Great week from Dak. Very impressive. Um, if we didn't already say so, he's healthy. And then... You know, Matthew Stafford was 20 for 26. I expect this offense to be super efficient because they just know how to set him up for mm -hmm. – it, it's a lot like San Francisco with Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, the designed pass plays are so well planned and executed that efficiency matters and touchdowns are going to matter for Stafford. And do not let the small uh, passing attempts number fool you. This is a team that was passing non-stop. They did not run the ball early until they were basically in that, you know, in a neutral game script, they were they were only passing the ball. Right. The re but his, you know, they went three and out a couple times, or it was a deep bomb that just finishes the drive. You don't get more pass attempts. And then they were up. So I, I, I am really looking forward to seeing what Matthew Stafford can do. And I, I mean, you know, they talked about it ad nauseum on the broadcast, but it does seem like, his best friend is Cooper Cup, and you know if I could they get go, in two hours before practice and they right. have breakfast together. Um, if I could go back in time, um, based on week one knowledge, I would certainly move Cup way up. I I think he's going to be. Uh, I I think this game was a little bit more prescriptive than um, just a week one outlier. You want a wide receiver that has breakfast with the quarterback. I mean, we've said it for years. We've said it for scrambled That's eggs together. That's the narrative I chase. I yeah. love breakfast, breakfast, you know, bros. and so I want a wide receiver that is with me on that. Imagine what the show would be like if we shared breakfast. Oh, we should do that. Yeah. But then we'd have to get up earlier. If yeah. you bought breakfast, I would definitely share it with you. Okay. Uh, running backs. Oh, hey, he's back. Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> you know, uh, let me ask you a question about this game because Christian McCaffrey, it's not a surprise. He's he's amazing. So, it's nice to see. So good. Nine for 89. Uh, also had 21 carries, 98 yards on the ground. Had 25 fantasy points, didn't score, uh, which is something that is incredible for a player on your roster. Did on your you roster. see my tweet from last night? I did not. So I, I was curious because he's the number one running back on the week. I expect him to stay there after tonight's games. He is? And – I went back over the last 32 games before I got bored the last couple of years to see if anyone had ever been the running back one without a touchdown, and it had only happened one other time. And did he that end was up number one. Yeah, and that was Christian McCaffrey who did it then. I mean, because if you can be the number one running back without scoring a touchdown, <laughs> I mean, you're un That's That's absurd. Absurd. unstoppable. And and then the weeks when he scores, he he wins you the week. Yes. Yeah. Um. Let me let me bring forward something from this game because both of these players fit into the the studs category, and I one thing I would be doing and and you can correct me. I'm concerned about Robbie Anderson. One hundred thousand percent. Nine targets, ninety eight yard or eighty nine yards for Christian McCaffrey. One catch for Robbie Anderson. Now, it was a fifty seven yard touchdown. Saved his week. But you know what? That's what he did in New York. He had the one big play with Sam Darnold in New York. He last year he was their Christian McCaffrey. Yes. He was their PPR short yardage solution. McCaffrey took all of it. So if it were if it were me with Robbie Anderson, I would be shopping that one for fifty seven and a touchdown. Do you agree? Yeah, I he again, we're we're trying to say it's week one, let's not overreact, but it's hard to not overreact to uh, you know, the, the 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 talk through the offseason is when Christian McCaffrey is back, it's going to affect somebody because he's going to come in and he's going to see a bunch of targets. What is that going to be? Because you, last year it was DJ Moore had, had morphed into the deep threat and Robbie Anderson was getting all the underneath stuff. Well, now DJ Moore is still running some deep stuff, but he's the number one wide receiver on this team as he should be. 
But Robbie Anderson dropping to three targets is, yeah, I, is terrifying. I am the resident Robbie Anderson truther here. Yes. I've been, uh, you know, I have him in tons of leagues because where he was going in drafts, I felt like he was undervalued. I still feel that way that he will outperform where he was drafted, but – I'm with you guys 100%. This game was perfect for you to be able to trade him. It, You know what I mean? Like, he had three targets. Terrace Marshall had six targets. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is the number one receiver yes. for this team. 153 um, target pace after one week but for he, McCaffrey. He ended up with a good fantasy game, and plenty of managers did not watch do not look deep enough to realize that the target volume and the reception volume. He had a good fantasy week. You can capitalize on that and 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 trade him. And that's not to say you need to trade him. He's going to be worthless. You can't start Robbie Agreed. Anderson. Agreed. He will have decent games, but he's not going to be the volume guy that, that we hoped is, is how it looks to play out. And the volume saves you from a wrecking your week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here is one of the few running backs that looked 100% like a workhorse, Joe Mixon. Yeah. 34, 33 touches. Forced Ooh. eight mixed, missed tackles. That was the most of any running back in week one. 29 carries. Outstanding performance from Joe Mixon. And um, pretty impressive for the Bengals altogether on the offense with Joe Burrow coming back from injury. Yep, they get to take on Chicago What were you laughing week? at, Jay? I was laughing at the fact that Joe Mixon had 29 carries, 127 yards, and a touchdown, and Christian McCaffrey beat him without scoring a touchdown. It's just like, it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, but, man, Mixon's going to get the rock a ton until he, unless he breaks down. Yeah, it was really a little bit surprising, but the majority of the game, the Bengals were winning. Yeah. So the pass versus run is something to stay tuned to. We we expected this to be a very pass happy team based on what we've seen the last couple of years with Zach Taylor, but that's also because they you know they've usually been losing. So who knows if they're good? Joe Mixon could be awesome. Nick Chubb did his thing on 15 carries, two touchdowns. Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift, both players ended up with monster or impressive fantasy games. Jamal Williams actually had fewer carries than DeAndre Swift, but had a touchdown. Nine targets, eight for 56. DeAndre Swift, 11 targets, eight for 65. When you combine that with Hawkinson's targets, mm. all the targets went to yep. the, the running backs and to the tight end position. Tyrell got hurt. You know, Tyrell concussed. I mean, he, he gets hurt every year. I mean, this is, the, this is the third consecutive year for Tyrell Williams where he has hurt on, like, week one. Mm. So, not surprising there, but... Even then, he, he didn't leave until the third quarter. And, you know, you, DeAndre Swift looked great. Uh, the, the, he is no longer on the groinindex.com. <laughs> uh, he should be fine. So th this was interesting. And, and both backs over 100 yards and a touchdown. Um, it'll be interesting to see if you have confidence to play Jamal Williams going forward. Certainly you have confidence fully in DeAndre Swift. Yeah, I feel like Williams is going to be more of a desperation flex by week fill where Swift – Look, Anthony Lynn likes throwing the ball to his running backs. He's gone from Los Angeles and the Chargers now. Deon Austin Eckler had no targets in this game. Yeah. That's, and uh, and here's DeAndre, DeAndre Swift out-targeted Christian McCaffrey. That's so, true. So, I mean, you're talking about he was probably the number one most targeted running back in week one. I don't have that number right in front of me, but I – Has to be. I mean, 11. And, I mean, that's – a. And their defense is going to struggle every it's, week. It was a large product of the game script of uh, San Francisco was up what what twenty something points. It's uh, going to be every now week. I know that by the if you if all you saw was the box score and that uh, Detroit closed that gap, they were down massively. But they're going to play against Green Bay, Baltimore the, the next two weeks. I think Jamal Williams is in. Yeah, I I would say slightly better than desperation flex. I think he's an okay flex. Yeah, yep. All right, Melvin Gordon, 11 for 101 and one monster touchdown run. Uh, Javante Williams had 14 rushes. He had more carries than Melvin Gordon. Yeah, but I don't actually. I mean, I watched the game, and this game was out of out of out of hand. So they gave the last like drive or two, two drives to Javante Williams when the game had nothing left. So I would look at it as a wash. I think they're going to mix both guys in equally. I think that's that's where it's a positive for Javante Williams. It. Melvin Gordon saved the entire game with what was it, like a seventy-something yard yeah. touchdown run. So that means before that carry, he was 
10 for 30. The, uh, he, he just – when you were watching, not the breakaway run, and I'm not going to take that away from Melvin Gordon. He did it. He came through in a big way for fantasy. Javante Williams looked much better. He had far more juice than Melvin Gordon. And I don't agree. I, I do I agree. Don't, I turned I to agree. Mike uh, about halfway through that game, and every time Javante touched, I, I said, man, he looks like he's got a lot more juice than Melvin Gordon. Now, obviously, Melvin Gordon had that 75-yard run, which was great, but I, I do think that, like, Melvin Gordon's fine. The matchups coming up are awesome. Jacksonville, Jacksonville and the yes. Jets. The, I mean, you're going to get off to this great start with Melvin Gordon. That's that's fine. But when I looked at these two players, I, I did think, by the end of the season, it will the 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 changeover will be made. So he is another guy that I would be willing to kick the tires on on looking to trade high because he's got a huge name. He had a hundred yards and a touchdown, a monster fantasy game. You might be able to find someone in your league to actually trade up at running back. Um, oh, I don't who, disagree who, with any of that. Who I wants mean, to get Melvin Gordon? Because I would do the same thing you guys would do with the backfield. My point was just. Juice to me in that game just meant speed, and Javante's faster, like to the edge. But Melvin Gordon broke tackles in a way that Javante kept getting caught in the backfield, and I felt like Gordon broke tackles better than Javante did. I would a hundred percent trade Melvin Gordon um, after a seventy-one yard touchdown run, no question about it. Although the next three weeks are going to be very attractive, make, so maybe I'd wait. You make no, you make a, a high trade offer now. Go shoot your shot mm -hmm. on what you think you might be able to get. If you get, get it turned uh, down, if you get it turned down, whatever, move on, wait a week, have a good performance against Jacksonville, offer the same thing. And it, the, the, my point where I was going was if this is the split already in week one for Javante Williams, that uh, this was the type of situation where you're hoping by the halfway point of the season that Javante takes over being the, pr the primary guy. Melvin Gordon's not going away, but if this is where we are starting, we could get to that point sooner than later for, for Williams. Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, honorable mentions here in the studs. Yep. David Montgomery was outstanding. Out yes, he was. Standing. 16 for 108. The Rams gave up zero 100-yard rushing games last year. Montgomery goes out and does it in, in, in a negative game script against a Rams team. And um, he was he was outstanding. You want to talk about juice? That guy looked he looked fantastic. You, we, we we talked about it. There were a handful of small handful of running backs that when you watched they were difference makers, and David Montgomery was one of them. It's going to be he's a, he's a great running back. Yeah, people, some people moved him. The pendulum swung too far with the narrative of like easy schedule at the end of the year. Like it's not easy with an easy schedule to put that many top ten weeks together, especially when you have. Uh, just trash quarterback play and an offense that's not around the goal line a lot. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think you're going to be able to trade for him. If you could, I would do it. Um, certainly, but uh, if you drafted him, you're going to be happy this season. Now, did, so then you're not going to have any concerns. So David Montgomery had 17 opportunities. Damian Williams had 11 opportunities. That makes that, me happy, not sad. Really? Yeah, and, yeah, and Montgomery went to the locker room with a with a dislocated finger and missed, true. missed a couple drives. That, yeah. The fact that one of the big fears coming into this season was David Montgomery was without Tariq Cohen because of the injury last year and was left as like the last man there, and now they brought in Damian Williams, and you go, is he going to be able to get enough volume? And And we saw with Damian Williams there that Montgomery is the center of the offense. And so that's why I'm saying I see it as a good thing. Cincinnati, okay. Cleveland, Detroit for the next three weeks. You may have two positive game scripts for Montgomery coming up. Uh, wide receiver studs for week one. Mari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, we saw them on Thursday. Tyreek Hill had a, a mediocre 15, uh. 15 targets, 11 for 157 and 1. He's unstoppable. Now Mike's groaning and, and head shaking and kind of curmudgeon face is no reflection on the individual of Tyreek Hill, but more on the fact that he thought he had his matchup put away. And I then, did. And then suddenly Tyreek Hill... 11 for 200 yards? Flew in with his cape. Yeah, I mean, that's Tyreek, man. Ho-hum, uh, 197 yards. So always open. Upsetting. Debo. <laughs> targeted, 12 targets. Yeah, targeted on 48% of his routes. We've been talking about this metric recently of percentage of targets on routes that you ran being a very sticky indicator of success that's why we called the Antonio Brown shot and 
that is a super high number from week one. And yeah, let's just enter this into evidence to build the case for Debo Samuel being a very valuable, important part of the team mm -hmm. that Kyle Shanahan loves, trusts, and wants to be healthy so that they can win ball games. And I, and I do still fully think Ayuk is going to get involved. I mean, he's still recovering from the hamstring injury. He's coming back uh, soon, and I he will, I still believe, overtake Trent Sherfield and give him a real good wide receiver one, wide receiver two punch. Are we worried about George Kittle at all? No. Okay. No, good. I'm not because of what tight ends represent. And, and you know, he had, he had one play that he was really close to breaking for a long touchdown. He's going to get the – He'll have the big touchdown in one of these weeks coming up, and I'm not concerned. Okay, uh, only five targets, so I was like, hmm. "Yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought he looked good, but this was also a game like you brought up. I mean, they ran the ball like crazy. Elijah Mitchell. We'll talk about him more tomorrow, but yeah, I mean, when they're down, you're going to see more Kittle. We've got three starts of the week here: Antonio Brown, seven targets, five for one, twenty-one and one. Tyler Lockett, four for a hundred and two. And Adam Thielen, 10 targets, 9 for 92 and 2. Um, whew, I tried to trade for Thielen in every league possible for the week leading up to the season. Ever since Irv Smith went down, I was ready for action with Adam Thielen, and he was delightful. Now, it was it, of note, not that it stopped Adam Thielen, he saw 10 targets, but was an interesting note for the Minnesota Vikings where it their you know their base offense has been two wide receivers on the field their base offense was 11 personnel this this week so there was a third wide receiver on the field out there it, it'll be interesting to track if that negatively impacts the target share for Jefferson and Thielen moving forward based on what we saw from the offensive line struggles against the Bengals D line I'm going to say they need to move back to some more uh, 12 personnel, get an extra tight end in there and uh, block. Uh, do you know who's smiling right now with the way that offensive line performed? Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones. <laughs> Arizona at home. Chandler Jones coming off a five-sack week. Is it possible for him to hit double-digit sacks by week two? <laughs> How incredible would that be? I mean, yeah, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to take the Cardinals in that one. Okay. Corey Davis, five for 97 and two touchdowns. The Jets sucked. They <laughs> looked really bad on offense, and yet Corey Davis had a game. I, I But this is Which one of those. tells you something. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to feel because you can have the two different arguments, right? They were bad, and Corey Davis was still good. He's the clear number one here. But also, they were really bad, and there were a lot of fears even for Corey Davis as the game went on, and then and then it worked out. Then he got the two touchdowns, great. But I'm, I am uh, pessimistic on the outlook of the Jets' offense uh, from what you know. This was the first chance to see Zach Wilson not in preseason, not playing against you know some backups, and it wasn't good. And it was Carolina, it, exactly. And it was but, Carolina. But rookies get better, you know. It, it it's. That's the one thing is rookies can improve over the years. So there is some, there's the chance that the offense, he gets more comfortable. He takes more shots downfield. I got so sick of watching him swing the ball to the left for negative one yards in this game. It was gross. It reminded me of Adam, like they had notes from Adam Gaves still up on the chalkboard and they accidentally paid attention to those mm -hmm. instead of Robert Sala. Um, Hopkins and Kirk were great for Arizona. Two touchdowns each. Uh, we'll talk about Christian Kirk more tomorrow, I think. Um, we talked uh, – we got uh, Sterling Shepard, 7 for 113 and a touchdown. Yeah, that was He was the best wideout in camp. Uh, he normally – I mean, he does trick us year to year. <laughs> he does. And, and Galladay was coming <laughs> off an injury, so I'm not sure I would do too much there. Okay. Cooper Cup, big game. <clears throat> oh, Jamar Chase, for sure. Jamar, Jamar – Good for, good for you, Jamar. You <laughs> you put the crow in my mouth. You looked great. He you, crammed it in your mouth. You had seven targets, five receptions, 101 yards. It was yards still squawking as it went in. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And just like Devontae Smith was the man, Jamar Chase was. He the, was the man. He was the number one wide receiver for this team. I think um, Higgins had four targets. Uh, I can I can vet it, but four, I'm saying like, four catches. like no, snap think, count. It was, Jamar was the guy. Yeah. 
I think Higgins, I want to say, had five catches. But, yeah, you, you can vet that. The Higgins other, was five targets, four for 58, and a score. Yeah, I mean – And Tyler Boyd was kind of – in the periphery. Tyler Boyd, yeah, was definitely the, the third. The 50-yard touchdown really, obviously, is what set him over the top. That's why they drafted him for the big playability. You hope to continue to see that. Obviously, he only had, you know, four for 50 outside of that. Um, I, I think he is legit and will be great. I still, I, I still believe T. Higgins. Like, if I would put the rest – well, we already have bets, right, on T. Higgins versus – uh, Jamar Chase, but the good news is, it it doesn't matter if you're wrong if both are good. Sure, I'm just saying that the snaps were in Jamar's favor, the the routes were in Jamar's favor, the production was in Jamar's favor. Target it's, share. It's hard to not get excited. Zach Pascal, for four for eighty and two. Pascal. I mean, you rap scallion. I kept saying this weekend, Zach Pascal is the Tim Patrick of the Colts. And Tim Patrick is the Zach Pascal of the Broncos. And they both. They are both solid receivers. And Pascal did this last year. I mean, he did this last year with Hilton going down. It was Pascal that caught the touchdown passes, 80 yards. Mm -hmm. He is a pickup to For me. For sure. I mean, you, you if you draft like I drafted in but a couple But as soon as you spots, put him in your lineup. <laughs> right. It'll be tough. But <laughs> by comparison, Russell Gage looked like someone who was had a had an opportunity to be solid, have a lot of yards, big involvement in the offense. He goosed. He is the type of player where if if you had a Russell Gage on your team, replace him with a Tim Patrick or a or Zach Pascal. And uh, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen had fifteen, or I'm sorry, twelve targets for Mike Williams, thirteen for Keenan Allen. Oh Huge game for Mike Williams. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Yeah, you just kind of hold your breath a little bit. He had a couple plays. He went down. I thought he was hurt again. I mean, well, I, that, yeah, that's. Mike Williams, put him in your lineup. Don't watch him play. Yeah, yeah. Because then you're, you know, it's too scary. Gronkowski, Kelsey, Gronk, Gronk, Gronk. Hawkinson. Oh, baby. Ten targets, eight for 97 for Hawkinson. Ten targets. So that means you had eight for Williams, 11 for Swift, and eight for Hawkinson, which was, I mean, that was more targets for those three than Winston had pass attempts at all. Yeah, he had a league-leading 53 routes run at the tight end position. Second place was 40. Hawkinson is their passing game. I mean, obviously, Swift is there too, but he is going to be reliable and a huge yeah, breakout. Any concern that Hawkinson's hair is going to get in the way for the rest of the year? No, I think it's giving him power. Okay. All right. Important. <laughs> what was that again? It's power. <laughs> power. Let's move on. Pooped in his big boy pants. Oh, it's back, baby, by popular popular demand. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Well uh, done. All right. Um, popular demand. Goodness. All right. Let me remind you. <laughs> what are you giving me? You, you grading me here? I'm grading that one. That's, well, a, that's a I got a nine. That's a nine. I was a big fan of that poop joke. Well, it, you'll be more of a fan of that joke in the drop than you will be some of the players we talk about. But a reminder, it's week one. 5.88% of the season completed. Last year, Antonio Gibson had a huge pooper in week one. Keenan Allen stunk in week one. Tyler Higby, bad week one. And, um, you know, Higby bounced back for three touchdowns in week two. And Keenan and Gibson, you know how their seasons went. So deep breaths. But Rodgers' career is over, right? I mean, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> his career is over. It's done. 15 for 28, no touchdowns. The two most shocking games of the week to me, uh, Arizona versus – Tennessee that yeah I none of us thought that could happen that it was the the the, def, the defensive line of Arizona was so dominant that I mean they Tennessee was really shut down and then the Drew Breesless Saints completely changed how they play football they went to a ground and pound defensive team and we're just going to have Jameis Winston not lose the game for us and they crushed Green Bay crushed them Jordan Love played almost the entire fourth quarter because the Packers had already waved the white flag by then look Rodgers went to the doctor this morning and he wrote him a script for the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. take one next Sunday who gets to place Aaron Rodgers as their start of the week next week first <laughs> <laughs> paper rock scissors <laughs> yeah um he'll bounce back it's Aaron Rodgers he was embarrassed the press conference was a bunch of embarrassed people. That being said, it's almost like you needed to be around at camp. It's almost like 
you know, you you can't help. He was there for camp. You can't. Who? He was there for preseason. Yeah. You're talking well, about Aaron yeah, Rodgers? Right, yeah, sorry, preseason. He was yeah, there. Yeah, if you remember, Aaron Rodgers went through the yes. pre, the offseason of, of absolute yeah, the stuff he skipped. embarrassment. Also, why does he look so ugly now? His, <laughs> what? His current look. Look, Aaron Rodgers sometimes. He's, he's you don't got like more, the long hair. Oh, his oh it's good for look. Hawkinson, but it's not good for Rodgers. Correct. One of them. I mean, I look, think someone's jealous. Aaron, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers <laughs> has had a lot of different looks. Like, yeah. A lot of different. And sometimes. He's got a super handsome look. He is. I'm just saying, right now, Rodgers, this look is, oh, man, it is bad. You don't think some of that no touchdown game wiped off on your uh, view there? Of what uh, he, You don't think he would have looked beautiful with five touchdowns? I don't think he could look beautiful. <laughs> this <current laughs> oh, look. my gosh. Hair hater. Yeah. Hair, yeah, well, look, I get it. Um, Aaron Rodgers, man, passer yeah, rating was, was 32. But I'm not freaking out. And uh, Pro Football Focus put out this funny tweet. The passer rating if thrown into the dirt every play would be 39. Wait, that means he threw into other people's arms instead of the dirt. That's right. Wow. Yeah, he had, he had a couple ugly throws. Matt Ryan had a mm. huge stinker of a week. Disappointing. That offense looked this like one, it missed Julio Jones. Like I'm not concerned about Rodgers. I'm concerned – here about Matt Ryan. I'm trying to. That means you're concerned about Calvin Ridley. Yes, I am. I'm trying to pump the brakes here, but like so far, you know, it's Arthur Smith is here uh, in town in Atlanta. Arthur, and he's got a plan, and that plan was apparently destroy all of Matt Ryan's production to ruin both the Falcons <laughs> oh, yes. and the Titans. I'll throw this out there. It's really though. selfish. You know, every every year defense is there's a turnover. There's teams that like the Cardinals, the defensive line, and we don't know if the Eagles are much better than we thought they were on defense. You can throw that out there. Now, a prescription for a remedy there is not Tampa Bay and Tampa. Mm -hmm. No. So I would be, yeah, I, I, we're going to be. I'm concerned. We're going to be on this show next week talking about are you scared for Calvin Ridley. That's the likelihood with the Tampa uh. matchup. Um, running back, Duds, Zeke, Henry, Saquon. You know, Saquon has Washington's defensive line next week on Thursday. Not great. No. So that's going to be a tough start-sit decision for people. Uh, Aaron Jones. So there's four studs. Who are you most concerned about? Uh, I'm most concerned about Saquon because you knew he was going to be eased in. He only got 10 carries, and um, it, it's going to take him probably a month before he's looking like we want Saquon to look. So that means the next couple of weeks, you're not going to be starting him. Derrick Henry, the, the defensive line of the Arizona Cardinals, you know, the hopes of getting Chandler Jones back, adding J.J. Watt, that looked insanely good. Zeke, we talked about it with Tampa Bay's D-line. That was a bad matchup. Aaron Jones, not worried at all. New Orleans, another great run defense, gets the Detroit Lions. But Saquon, I think the next couple of weeks is an issue. And, uh, you know, I've got him in our, our listener league and – I will hopefully be able to bench him this this coming week. Here's a player I'm not worried about at all that had a, a dud of a week. A lot of people, big expectations. Najee Harris, 16 for 45. He had some plays that I thought he looked like a rookie. Um, trying to do too much, right? Sure. The offense wasn't – the offense had a – not a great game against Buffalo. They had a special teams play and, like, one good offensive drive, and otherwise it was, it was kind of nasty. And the Steelers – the Steelers' defense is just as dominant yeah. as they were last year, but – to add to your point, Andy, running back snaps for Najee Harris, 58. As a as a rookie, first game. Uh, running back snaps for Benny Snell, zero. How about Kalen Balazs? Also zero. The the two guys that do, I think – Do not panic on Najee. The two guys that I, I want to ring the bell to not panic on are Najee and Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Okay. Clyde Edwards-Alaire was very disappointing. He got yes. double-digit fantasy points but barely and you know was not anything special. But there are only a few – opportunities in the league where you are the every down guy and that's what we saw 90 percent of the backfields 100 percent of the running back targets uh, he was there on third downs I think there was only one rushing attempt for another player like it, this was all Najee all Clyde Edwards Alaire and I want to remind you guys like Kansas City when when Kareem Hunt had his incredible breakout year mm -hmm. and was just dominant was the running back for he had so many weeks back then where it was like Andy Reid after the game would be like, oh, we should we should use that guy more or whatever, you know, where you've got – I'm looking at his box score from that year and all the time, 11 carries for 17 yards, nine 
receiving yards. I mean, just complete duds. I'm not I'm not worried about either of these two guys because okay. Najee is unbelievably talented and I think he'll break plays. And with Clyde, he's on the best offense. And that means opportunities should be there. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw Clyde different in the offseason. I still view – I mean, it, to me, this is – you don't need Clyde Edwards-Alaire, which is the problem. He scored 33 points as an offense. He plays every snap as a running back. How many times did that happen last year they didn't need him? And he doesn't have breakaway speed, big playability. We see, we see this one differently, Mike. Maybe you can weigh in and, and kind of how you saw this performance from Clyde. Baltimore, Chargers, Philly the next three weeks. Uh I think that's the the hopeful ceiling for Clyde eh, like is probably not there, but I I I'm on Jason's side of there are not many running backs that see that that type of an opportunity in a as far as a market share in a high powered offense. Uh but it it didn't it did not bounce his way. You add a you add a single touchdown into this you know, 14 for 43, three for 29 and a touchdown. And you're like, okay, that's, that's not terrible. Yeah. That, that was the problem last year though. Yeah, it was. James Robinson was awful. That's a, that's this a real one's problem. a red alert for me. 35% of his team's running back rushes. His lowest of all of last year was 85%. That's from JJ Zacharias in front of the show. Uh, Mike, do you have room uh, for the Urban Meyer hate train. Oh, you know I do, brother. Because I, I, I was skeptical of your hatred pre the first NFL game, and I, I am <laughs> riding shotgun, man. I'm, Open that door up. I'm hopping in. If you, if you want to find a silver lining, I mean, this team is getting blown out by the Texans, which is not the, the Texans, silver lining. The Texans. But, but the game they blew them out. The game script was <laughs> not in the favor of of James Robinson, but, but Carlos Hyde is a pickup. So yes. It, um, wide receivers that pooped their pants this week. None bigger than Iuk situation. We talked yeah. about that one. Um, Kyle Shanahan said Trent Shurfield uh, impressed. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We talked all about what to do yep. there. Monitor it. Devontae Adams, not worried. Mike Evans, you, he does this every year. Yeah. I mean, I'm not worried about Mike Evans. He had probably five of these games last year. Allen Robinson. Um, what the heck, man? You don't really want to look at the routes that Robinson ran in this game like because Nagy, they were all under 10 yards. Yeah, man, Nagy saw the Hopkins route tree from last year. He's like, oh, that's a recipe for success. I think this is game specific. I think this was 100%. We have to get the ball out of Andy Dalton's hands so fast. I mean, you didn't have any deep shots to Darnell Mooney. You had nothing beyond 10 yards to Allen Robinson. This was the Aaron Donald may not have had five sacks in the game. He got in their heads before the week began. I, I, I agree. I think that this is game specific, and I'm not going to overreact on Allen Robinson yet. It was it was bad to see, and it certainly could be this is the Andy Dalton effect, but I'm I'm not viewing it this way. Julio Jones, six targets, three for twenty nine. Honestly, the Titans got nothing going in this game whatsoever. Uh, Seattle next week for Julio. It didn't Derrick Henry have nine rushing yards entering the second half? That is correct. Yeah, this game was nothing. Nothing went the Titans' way that would have let you see what they want to do on offense. So mm -hmm. I'm going to – my policy on Julio, I'm going to wait a week. I'm going to give – let him give – I'll put him out there against Seattle. Give me one more week of watching this team because Mike Vrabel's a good coach. You heard him come out, and he said something that I know you two have never said, which was he said Cliff Kingsbury out-coached him. He said they were out-prepared. You know, was were better. he winking? No, nope, they more prepared. Mm. And that they're going to talk bounce. about falling on your sword. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Just say it was your fault. <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, come on, Vrabel. I mean, it's funny because it's rare that we would go out on a limb and be like, I'm giving them no chance. I finally got on board with, with Bash and Cliff Kingsbury with you guys. And he goes out and you have to give them credit because on the road against Vrabel, dismantling them on both sides yep. of the ball, this was genuinely. This was the best game that the Cardinals have ever played under Cliff Kingsbury, uh, on, on yeah, all in all three phases of the game. Uh, outside of the first five minutes with twenty two penalties, um, yeah. But I will I I view a little bit differently on Julio Jones. I completely agree. Titans in general, you got to throw this one out. I think they're going to fix some of the problems. But I was a little bit worried. He, it, again. Hard to tell in this, and I want to go back and rewatch it, but he didn't look like 
Julio to me. There was a play on the sideline where you know he, he, he it just he looked a little different. Maybe old. it was the he looked a little old, and I don't want to say that because I don't want to I don't want to set panic alarms. But I'm certainly going to be watching this. Let next me let me week. give you a trade. Okay. Would you trade Robbie Anderson for Julio Jones? Because I would definitely do that. Yes, I would. I would oh, do okay. that. All right. So not that worried. I, I'm worried, and I'm going to be monitoring it. And I don't think I would just. He's not an auto start to me because of his name next week. Marquez Callaway was a bench, and you should have benched him. One catch, Jair Alexander. Uh, was the lone bright spot for the Packers. Yeah, and then Kenny Galladay, four for 64. This is not a, this is not a pooped in his pants to me. First game for the it's new just team. just a little like a skid mark. No, it's just a. It's just he's just wearing pants. They're they're clean, clean pants. And yeah. he actually he looked good out there. Yeah, he All looked right. fine. He did not. Um, he didn't this is win an anybody agree, a week. An egregious inclusion by our producer. <laughs> the, he didn't win anybody. How a dare week, you? But it was it was a okay performance. I just kept hearing that saxophone, the bad sax oh, that's drop worth, that we have, yeah, and I, I mean, couldn't help. You talking about this? Kenny G. Mm. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh. I, now, now I, I take back my <laughs> anger, Bro Brooksy. You know, Bro Brooksy's got a different pair of headphones on today, and it's throwing me off. He's wearing these like silver. Is that what you normally wear? No, I'm on a different mic. This, You're on why. a different mic. You're on different. He looks like he's from outer space. You're looking good, Brooks. Well, thank you. Just don't grow your hair out long, or Jason will think you're super ugly. I don't think we have to worry about oh, that. What if I could? <laughs> Get bodied. <laughs> Don't uh, gotta worry about that. Oh my goodness! Tight end duds in week one. Robert Tunyon on the other side of the Aaron Rodgers pooper. I would just wait a week. Yep. See what happens in Detroit. Uh, Mike Asiki was a bit of a surprise, um, just because Tua had leaned on tight ends a lot, and you saw more Devontae Parker. <laughs> yeah, Mike yeah. Gusicki. <laughs> yes, boy. And then Kyle Pitts eight targets, which was tied with Calvin Ridley. Um, seventy-one percent of snaps ran around on ninety percent of the dropbacks, but I'm, only four receptions tied with Hayden Hurst, uh, for thirty-one yards. Yeah. So I, I'm just the, the peripherals are good. Yeah, I would just wait the same way I'm going to wait with Calvin Ridley and see what happens next week. Are you playing? Like, l l let's be realistic. Yes, You've got so Kyle Pitts. Yes. So you're starting him next week against Tampa Bay. No question. Who are you going to pick up and play over? I don't want to talk about that yet. That's a I teaser mean, Dal for tomorrow. Dal oh, okay. Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin did work against Tampa Bay in week one. I'm not going to bench the guy I probably spent a fifth or sixth round pick on. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure you were, uh, you know, you were comforting yourself with that performance. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I saw both sides of it. The eight targets is, is really promising. His utilization was good. But I echo Mike's thoughts on Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons offense – in the sense that it was Ugros. they were at home against the Eagles. And while yeah. the Eagles could definitely be better than we expected them to be prior to the start of the season, the, I don't think they are some world-class dominant defense all of a sudden with the personnel they have. So, um, Arthur, yeah, better figure it out. Yeah, he better. Um, what a week one. We still got another game tonight. So we get to see the Raiders and the Ravens. I, I I'm telling I think the Raiders are going to win. Oh, you stop what? it. I think the you Raiders stop. are going to win the game. I do. I do not. I I, re I recognize the fact that that is contrarian of me to say. I think the line surprised me when the week a, began. Push a button. I what mean, button do you want me to push? The, oh, I want another almost upset of the week. I mean, this is. No, but he's calling for them to win. Well, then it's. Well, that still counts. <laughs> that still counts. Just push like the laughter button if we had one of those. I just I don't know why. You sound like David Carr over there. Look, I, yeah, I saw that Super Bowl, Super Bowl Derek. David Carr picking his brother to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, every year. Great analysis. Every year, this is the year. That was like listening to to new hair plugs Drew Brees talk about <laughs> how good the Saints played uh on defense right. like when they were talking about uh, uh to be fair, the Saints looked I great. I mean, they, they did look great. All <laughs> right. We want to thank pristineauction.com. Travis Kelsey signed Lunar Eclipse speed helmet. $65 ends on Tuesday night. There's a Debo. Now you're a man. Get it while he's healthy. Uh, signed 49ers Eclipse helmet. $50 ends on Tuesday night. Uh, look, use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. You'll save $10 on some sweet sports memorabilia. They just did Pristine Week where they give like free credit to everybody who has an account. So at a minimum, go sign up an account because you might get like 
free money at yeah. random times. And you never know. Use the code BALLERS and you'll get free money right away mm. at pristineauction.com. All right. Waivers on tomorrow's show, including uh, some streamer picks. Do not miss it. Jointhefoot.com is the fantasy football community. And uh, why, why would I say that out loud about the Raiders? There's just nothing, I, to, very I, little to gain. I was trying to help you. I'm sorry. They're going to win, though. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.